Today, we're going to look at Arizona versus Purdue. This is number one versus number three. I think these are two of the absolute best teams in the nation for sure. We're discuss one concept Purdue went to repeatedly, and then the concept Arizona went to repeatedly, and how each team countered the other team. Let's go. Let's look at the Arizona side of the ball first. And the first thing is Arizona always wanted to try and get to this ball screen, especially with the score being the one hand on the ball of Caleb Love. Okay, so if they drop, if they sag too deep, you're, he's more than welcome to shoot this three as long as there's some separation caused from the original screen. And this puts a lot of pressure on the trailing defender because you have to worry about getting up there to make sure you can test the three, which means you're able to go downhill, which means you're able to engage Zach Eady when he comes up to make sure he guards you, which means there's an open dunk. We're going to talk about this more in a bit, but when Arizona had a little bit of motion beforehand, it really freed up Kayla Love when coming around these screens. And while I'm not a huge fan of the mid-range jumpers, it probably is okay in this situation. So the reason I believe that Purdue went on this big run where they're essentially, they went from being essentially tied somewhere near 20 to having a 15, 10 to 15 point lead is because they went to this defense. So in this defense here, they are trying to prevent it so that Arizona is not able to use the screen in the first place. So it's called icing the ball screen, forcing it to the sideline, making sure you can't even use this screen. So Zach is already in good position and you just prevent Love from getting to the screen in the first place, which makes it so he has to go downhill and force it. And this, is, this is a tough shot. This is not the shot you want if you're Arizona. So there was a significant stretch of time which Arizona really struggled to score the ball. And then after halftime, one of the big adjustments they made to make sure they weren't able to be icing it is to make sure there was motion prior to the ball screen occurring. So if we look at it, he's at a dead sprint. Like he's not dribbling the ball trying to create the separation. He is at a dead sprint and that makes it so this defender, there's no way he's gonna be able to get between him and the ball and the dribble handoff, which I like it more anyway. And the other, another added wrinkle is they set a screen on Zach Eady to make sure his help is confused as well. And so it's difficult to choose who you're going to protect the rim and who's going to come out to this offensive player out here and who's going to stop the ball. So once Arizona went to that, they had a lot more success. So again, we can see Caleb Love comes off a screen beforehand, make it so Braden Smith doesn't have a chance to get in front of that screen. And this made it so much easier for Arizona to get good looks on offense. We can see the times they struggled. What is Purdue aggressively doing? They knew it was coming that time. They weren't in motion beforehand. Braden Smith gets out here aggressively to make sure you don't use the screen. And so what Arizona did in that situation is essentially who's going to be free is this player on the roll right here. Okay? And so what Purdue is saying is Lakers saying, yeah, pass it to him. That's fine. We're going to take this opportunity. And I'd be curious in the long run if this is a win for Arizona or Purdue. I don't know. With Zach E there, it certainly makes it tough, but he had a lot of success just going at Zach Eady as well. Okay, motion move ran just a little bit to confuse it, set the screen, and what happens? Wide open dunk at the rim. Same thing, almost the exact same play, honestly. And this time, Zach is a little bit far off, and if you can go into him with your body, that's a good look. Exact next possession, same concept. So this is the second big key. Okay, so when this happens right here, essentially Purdue was like, oh crap, they're beating us consistently running this same action. What are we going to do? We're just going to pick one of Arizona's players and just be like, ah, we're not going to guard him. And we'll loosely contest it, but he's just off and he is not worried. And so essentially they're saying, we're going to have to live with you beating us from the outside, but we can't give up dunks and layups at the rim. That being said, Arizona really hid their action really well. Again, we can see the screen on Edie, forcing him to essentially make a decision and forcing 55 to make a decision as well. Purdue does a good job here. We can see that the reason essentially this play doesn't or isn't able to work is because this defender gets out here and I'm relatively not, not super high on number two as a defender, but he does a good job breaking up this ball screen before it is able to actually occur and prevents this play. Even though like, Love shoots it, that's a difficult shot. Same thing, motion is getting downhill. And so that's the trade-off that Purdue is going for. They're saying, we'll let your athletic player come downhill at Zach Eady. And frankly, what should probably happen is a drop off the ball right here. But I, I respect him for going straight at him. I, I like that a lot. So Purdue's two adjustments to essentially send extra help and to start icing the ball screen definitely allowed them to essentially keep ahead of Arizona when Arizona was beginning to make that run. 
So then we get to Purdue's side of the ball, and there's two things that Purdue did is, one, they ran they ran the ball screen quite a bit for Braden Smith, and that worked today decently well, but this was the action they went to more often. It's just like, this is what they always do. They go into Zach Eady, and I'm going to be honest, I thought Zach Eady was going to struggle a little bit more um, playing against Balo one-on-one, but he, had, he did really well. Like, he shot really efficiently, especially in the first half. But frankly, that being said, these shots, Arizona is happy with these shots. It's the dunks and layups in the rim that Arizona is not happy about. This may be an okay, decently defensive team. But essentially, essentially, what Arizona struggled to do is to force Edie to shoot from distance, at least until the second half that we're going to talk about. And the thing about Purdue is until you're able to prove that you can take it away, they just keep, keep going right to it over and over and over again. And we can see it was 28-28 here, which shows that Purdue's defense on the other end is what allowed them to essentially go on that run where they were up by 13. Okay, and so the most common thing is that teams are going to double, and the one thing that I kind of, kind of find confusing is why you're going to double from the near side shooter. Like you know, Fletcher is probably the best or the second best shooter here, and Smith is the best shooter. Why make it clear that you're going to double from there? Like I get it, Purdue does a good job of making sure the next player cuts the rim or isn't near at all, but. If you're Arizona, you gotta discuss this in more detail or, or find time and practice to work on it so you know what the rotations are so that three gets there much quicker. Okay, so again, we can see them just going into eating. If you're gonna play them one-on-one, -on -one, they are content with that shot all day. So we can see that right here, there's a 15 point lead. So this is when I think Arizona makes the big change that shifted the course of the game that allowed them to get it back to four. So what does Arizona do on defense right here is they essentially go to a quasi zone. But essentially in this zone, their goal is to just force Zach Eady to have a little bit more traffic. So while this one isn't a huge crazy dif difference in shots, he has made them at a high percentage and at some point he's going to miss. Like that is not like just the easiest shot in the world. And his percentage if you force him to catch it on the outside is going to go down. So Arizona in this zone, I just like the concept of it because when you help, you're not helping from the same thing every time. So Zach Eady doesn't entirely know where everyone's coming from, and Balo's just being physical, strong, forcing to shoot it from distance, and that's when you're gonna get good defensive possession. We can see that repeatedly, they're forcing him to be outside, I don't know, a five foot arc around the rim. Hey, if you can force Zach Eady to have to dribble a couple times before he puts up a shot, or to feel like he has distance, this is a good defensive possession by Arizona. Again, what is Purdue gonna do? They're just gonna throw the ball in. So they're trying to get a high low in here, but the idea of this zone for Arizona, it's not just a two three as the commentators are saying. It's a little bit more like, there aren't crazy defined rules. And even when they went between man to man and two three, they just gave aggressive help to Zach Eady in this stretch. And so that he's seen a lot of hands near him and just makes him uncomfortable and makes it so he has to catch it further from the rim, which is the huge difference for his shooting percentage. And so we can see that because of this, they were essentially forcing bad shots or not great shots for Purdue. They weren't bad shots, not great shots for Purdue. And they were getting transition on offense. All it comes down to is getting stops on defense for Arizona because their offense is so good, they'll be fine. Okay, so again, they're forcing it in. What's the one issue? Where does Zach Eady catch this ball? It's not on the perimeter. The issue is Balo has to be a little bit worried about 55 in this zone. And so they're semi slightly confused, I'd say. And so he catches it near, and that's not where you want him to catch it. So again, what we can see, Purdue is moving the ball around. What they're trying to do, they're trying to get the ED. They're trying to get it to ED in close. Okay, so if you're going to let it get him close, you're going to have to send double. And then like we talked about, that rotation, this is dicey. I mean, you got to give up something. So maybe this is like, it's worth it in the long run. Again, force him to catch it at distance, and then you're okay. But if he gets in nearby, that's honestly, that's probably not, not bad for Arizona. And then so the big adjustment from Purdue that I like is that they obviously, it took them a while, but they recognize that this is like a zone. And so all they do is they essentially overload one side, force Arizona's defenders to this side. And then what do you have? You have Balo over here with Edie, who's the biggest threat. Frankly, Edie is the biggest threat. And so Balo is like, I got to make sure I stay easy. Got to make sure he's forced outside the paint, which means you put a really tough predicament between him and this outside shooter over here. And you just swing the ball and it's got to be a late closeout because you're wor so worried about Zach Eady down low that that's a good look for Purdue. 
And then, as we talked about, they kind of went back to man-to-man -man for a bit at the end. And if you double, they know where the double's coming. There's a reason Braden Smith is the shooter right here. And it's because he's the best shooter on the floor. Just steps into an uncontested three. In a five-point game with four minutes to go, you cannot allow this kind of shot. You just can't do it. Which forces you to pick and choose. You gotta have some battle. And so what I honestly think is at this point, number four, because zero, I guess I don't know what 25 shooting percentages are, but you gotta help off of somewhere and it's probably not here. Why not aggressively help off of one or both of these just to make it so Zaki faces some resistance down low. So in conclusion, this was a great game. So it started off with, I think, very evenly matched, and then Purdue made the adjustment to start icing screens, and I think that's what the big adjustment was that separated them in the game. But then Arizona countered by being able to create motion that allowed them to get great looks on offense again, and they countered by going into a little zone and providing E with a slightly different look, making them catch it outside, which gave them much better run, and that's why they were able to cut it to four. And in a rematch, I'd be very curious that it definitely could go either way. And I would probably favor Arizona, but overall, a great game. Um, if you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe, and have a great rest of your day.